This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another edition of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in from a user on how can I hollow out my model inside of ZBrush for 3D printing. So the process I'm going to go through is using the DynaMesh option of Create Shell. And this is going to allow me to take the mesh I have here and hollow it out so that it then can be sent for 3D printing and use less material. So to start off, the main thing you need to get this process to work is you need to have a model that has DynaMesh active. If you do not have a model that has DynaMesh turned on, you need to make sure it has DynaMesh turned on before you can actually proceed with this function. So here I have my model here and DynaMesh is active and my resolution is set to 600. Now there are a few methods you can actually use with the create shell function. The process I'm going to show today is how to use a secondary subtool to generate a hole on your model and then create the shell from that location. So to do this, we need to go to our subtool palette here, and we're just going to append in a simple cube 3D object. Now once this cube 3D object comes in your scene, it's going to be a little bit large, so we're going to come over here and select that cube 3D mesh, and then we're going to navigate up here to the top and select the Scale Transpose tool. Now with this selected, we're going to simply just drag this out so it's a little bit larger here, and we're going to grab this inner circle, and simply click and drag to scale that box down. Now once it reaches a level of about so, you could rescale again, or you could simply press one on your keyboard to repeat that stroke, and it should now make that little box a little bit smaller. Now after I have it scaled down to about this size, I'm gonna to switch to the move transpose option, and now I'm just gonna reposition this to the bottom of the model, like so. So we wanna create a hole in our mesh to actually create the shell from. So positioning this somewhere where it's not going to be seen when it's viewed is uh, generally a good idea. So by placing it down here at the bottom, it's a pretty good location to generate this hole at on the model. Now after we have this positioned correctly, embedded into our surface here, we need to now go to the subtool palette and turn this into a subtractive subtool. So I'm going to come over and change this icon here from this one here to the actual subtractive mode. And now the next thing you need to do is click the original tool that still has that DynaMesh active and then perform a merge down. Now when you perform a merge down to another subtool, it's going to just leave you with one subtool. Since that second subtool we merged into had that subtractive mode set, if you turn on your polyframes, you're going to notice that it now has this white polygroup applied to it. This white polygroup is going to tell ZBrush that when I perform a DynaMesh action to subtract this part out. So now that we have our model set like this and we have that clearly defined separation of polygroups, so the white polygroup and then the rest of the polygroups on that mesh there, we're now going to navigate back to our geometry tab here, go back to that DynaMesh panel, and now we just need to set a thickness. So for this mesh, we're going to try, say, a thickness of 8. So I'm just going to come over there and type in 8, and then I'm simply going to click Create Shell. Now, after this process completes, you'll notice that that cube that had that white polygroup has now been subtracted, and there is a shell that has been created from that area through the rest of the model. So this shell is actually broken up into a new polygroup now, so I can come across it and hold Control and Shift and isolate that. And you can see this is the entire shell that was created inside that model. Now, the thickness on this shell is going to generate a perfect thickness throughout the mesh, so that's where you're getting some of these stair-stepped areas through here. If you'd like to smooth this out, you can just come through now and hold down Shift and use a smooth brush to kind of smooth that inner cavity out if desired. So return your model. This is how you can quickly use a secondary subtool with DynaMesh and Create Shell to hollow out your model for 3D printing. If you have any questions related to processes inside of ZBrush, use hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. So I hope this helps and happy ZBrushing.